Hi, we're so glad to be here with you today for our next Sunday School lesson. This Sunday School lesson today is called Simeon and Anna, and it comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. And I'm so excited to learn about Simeon and Anna. Have you ever heard of Simeon or Anna? I think so. You think so? Well, let's see who they are and what this story is all about. So this story is going to take place after baby Jesus was born. Baby Jesus was just born, wasn't he? <gasps> On Christmas. And this is about 40 days after baby Jesus was born. So he's a little tiny baby. Do you want to show us a baby Jesus? Look how little he would have been. He was a little tiny thing there inside, wrapped inside his little blankets, right? And Mary or Joseph would have carried him in and they are going to visit the temple. Now I have a couple of things that we can look at to see what we think this story might be about. So do you want to show us a couple of things? Oh, what are those that you are holding? Can you show everybody? Binoculars. Binoculars? Hmm, I wonder what, what do you use binoculars for? To look, to look at far away things up oh, close. Sometimes it helps you see things better. Yeah. Isn't that right? Well, when's the time you've ever used a monocular? Have you ever been like to Like when you're on a walk or a hike? Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, so I think in our story today, we have baby Jesus, and we are going to be talking about seeing things a little bit better. And we have two other things. Do you want to show them these other two things that we might have in our story today? Oh. Uh, Oh, it's a picture. You want to show them really close so they can see? Oh, it's a picture of a little baby getting baptized. Oh, have you ever been baptized? I, yes. Oh, we have proof because that's your picture, isn't it? Yeah. That's you as a little bitty baby there getting baptized. And then we have one last thing in our story. And this is kind of a strange one. Let's see what it is. A it's, calendar. It's a calendar. Oh, our calendar is busy. That's right. In our calendar, we use a calendar so we can make sure we have all of our different events scheduled. Well, in this story, today, we're going to talk about having to wait for things. Do you ever have to wait for anything? Oh, yeah. What's something that you... Like, like wait for dinner when oh. you're really hungry. <laughs> That's a hard lunch one. lunch or breakfast. That's a hard one when there's food involved, isn't there? And sometimes you have to wait if you know there's a special event or if you're going to be playing with someone fun, right? So today in our story, we're going to be talking about Simeon and Anna. They're going to be waiting for something special. And then we know we're going to be looking for something extra special. They'll be looking, looking to try to find it. There's going to be a little baby that's back getting, like that's going to be somewhere. We showed your picture about getting baptized, but this is kind of about a baby getting dedicated. And who is that special baby going to be? Baby Jesus. That's right. So let's listen to our story and see if we can hear and find all of those special things. Okay, so our story again is called Simeon and Anna. And it's from the book of Luke, which remember is in the New Testament. Do you remember the books of the New Testament? Matthew, Matthew Mark, Mark, Luke, Luke and John. John. That's right. And so this is the third book. Okay, so let me show the pictures and we will read the story. Simeon and Anna. Okay, there was an old man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. Simeon loved God. He knew God's words and believed God's promises. And God made a promise to Simeon. God promised Simeon that he would not die until he saw the person God was sending to save to the whole world. One day, Simeon went to the temple, and the temple was very crowded. Many people were there. Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus were there too. Simeon looked around. When Simeon saw baby Jesus, he got very excited. Could Jesus be the one? Simeon pointed out baby Jesus and asked, may I hold him? Carefully, Mary said, and Simeon carefully picked Jesus up and began praising God. So here, let's look at the picture. Here we have Simeon is this old man right here, and there's baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph. So they went to the temple and Simeon was looking for someone. Who was he looking for? Baby he Jesus. Was, uh, why did he know to look for baby Jesus? Who told him that he would see God. him? God. God. And he told him, sometime in your life, you will meet baby Jesus. Well, Simeon didn't know when, right? So he must have waited a really long time. Do you think he like, waited longer than sometimes we wait for dinner? Oh, yeah. I think so. <laughs> so he was so excited when he saw baby Jesus. Okay, let's read a little more. Simeon said, God, you have kept your promise. You have let me see the one you promised to send. He will save the whole world. Mary and Joseph were amazed. Was Jesus part of God's promise to save the whole world? What does this mean? Joseph asked. How can this be? Simeon talked about God's promise with Mary and Joseph. And then he blessed Jesus and his family. So who was this man? What was his name again? Simeon. Simeon, that's right. And he had waited so long for baby Jesus. 
An old woman, here she is, named Anna, was also at the temple. Anna lived at the temple, and she worshipped God and prayed day and night. When Anna saw Jesus, she rushed over. She knew Jesus was special. Would Mary let Anna hold Jesus too? What do you think? Yes. Yes, Mary said. Anna began praising God too. She told everyone who would listen, Jesus is the one God promised to send. Jesus will save the world. Then Anna handed back Jesus back to Joseph. Take good care of him, Anna said. Oh, we will, Joseph said. What an exciting day. When Mary and Joseph finished at the temple, they took Jesus home to Nazareth. And Jesus grew up in Nazareth. He became strong and wise, and God was always with him. So let's remind ourselves again, who was in this story? Can you remember who these Simeon were? Simeon and Anna. And then? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. That's right. And what was so special? Why were they, they look kind of older, and what were they waiting for their whole life? Um, Jesus. They were waiting to meet Jesus mm -hmm. because who told them that he would God. be able to meet them? God said, one day you will meet Jesus. And Anna, she lived at the temple. She was there all the time and she was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then nobody came in like with a name tag on. So how did they know? How did they know it was baby Jesus? What do you think? I don't know. I think somebody may, must have told them. Do you think God or the Holy Spirit yeah. came to them and told them? I think so too. Because they were like, oh, that's him. They knew who it was. Yeah. It was amazing. So we've been on walks before where you're looking for special things, right? And we, I know we, in the summer, we had, we, we talked about having a nature walk. We can go out and see all the special things God made. Well, in this story today with Simeon and Anna, they were looking for one thing in particular. What were they looking for? They were looking for baby Jesus. They were looking for baby Jesus. And God kept telling them, I will show him to you. He will come. You will see him. You will see him, he said to Simeon and Anna. And so Simeon and Anna had to have faith. They had to believe that God would keep his promises. And did he keep his promise? Yes. He did. And so today what I thought for our craft is I thought, let's do a craft where we can look for all those things that God has made. And so we can see all the promises God has given to us and we can use our eyes to look for them as carefully as possible. When Simeon held baby Jesus, he said, for my eyes have seen your salvation. That means he saw baby Jesus and he knew God kept his promise. So. Today, we only have two things you're gonna need for your craft. Do you wanna show us what they're gonna need? Sure. You need some scissors and some pipe cleaner. That's right, how many pipe cleaners do we need? Two. Two, that's right, and it doesn't matter what color they are. No, so today we have two of them and they're both white, but it doesn't matter, you can use whatever color. Now, one pipe cleaner we wanna keep nice and big. The other pipe cleaner, we're actually gonna cut right in half. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Do you want me to hold it? Or... Okay, go ahead and cut that. And they should cut pretty easily, good job. If they don't, I have another pair. Yeah. Okay, let's use a bigger pair. Sometimes maybe it might take a grown-up pair of scissors, but that might also mean you might need a grown-up nearby to help you cut. Okay, we're gonna cut those right in half. Woo, perfect. Snipped them right there. Okay, we have our two halves. We have our big um, pipe cleaner. Now the special part on this, you might need a grown-up's help when you make this, but I know Lincoln, you can help me too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make glasses with our pipe cleaners. Do you think these glasses will really help us see? I don't know. Probably not, but they're going to make us feel like we can look even better for all those promises yeah. God has given us. <laughs> now, the way we do that is we're going to take the end of this and we're going to form it into like a little circle. So here we go. There's our circle. Do you see? It kind of looks like a balloon. You're going to make it like that and then we're going to fold it right in. Okay, here we go. Now, that's one eye. How many eyes do you have? Two. Two, so we need to make a second eye. So what do you think we're gonna do this one? You ready? We're gonna take another it, circle. we're gonna pick a circle, but we need a little spot in the middle. So remember, it looks like a balloon first, and then we're gonna fold it right here. Do you wanna fold that over? Kind of bend it up and over. Okay, now, can you pretend that those are gonna be your glasses? Do they go that way or the other way? What do you think? I think hmm. that way, that looks good. Okay, but in order for our glasses to stay on, what do we, else do we need to add to them? The earpiece. The earpieces. So that's where these pieces come in. So you're going to hold your glasses, and you want to do one, and I'll do one. Okay, you're going to hold them like this. You're going to take this extra half piece of pipe cleaner, and we're just going to hook it on. I like to put it at the back, and then hook it towards the front. Uh-oh. Oh, come back here, little guy. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> here we go. I hooked it onto the front. And we're just gonna fold it around there. Okay, now I'm gonna bend it back. Okay, your turn. You wanna try yours? And let me know if you need any help. Perfect, a little bit at the top, a little. There you go, and bend it around. 
And then I think to make it more comfortable I at the very end, we ears. should put like, yeah, that's right, a little spot around your ear. So I think if we just curve it down at the bottom, do you want to try yours? Kind of like that. Okay, now let's show them what they look like. So here we have our glasses. You want to show them the sides? Do you see how we curved the back? Now when we put them on, if they don't fit, we can always fix it a little differently. Oh, look at that. Do you feel like Simeon or Anna? Yeah. I think you do. So when you have those on, here, hold on, let me see. I think I have a pair too. When you have them on, we can pretend like we're Simeon and Anna. And we are looking for all of the promises God has made. <laughs> do you think this would be a fun craft to make at home? Oh, yeah. I think so too. And you can make all different colors. <laughs> now, as we put on our glasses, we want to remember the special part about Simeon and Anna. They were waiting on God's promise. And they had such faith in him that he would follow through. So thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you next time. <laughs> Hi. Happy New Year. How are you? Good? I'm glad. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump into today's lesson, and we know it's, it's from Luke. So one of the books of the Bible in the New Testament, Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. And I know at some point you heard uh, the Bible story, but let's go in a little deeper, okay? So if we jump right into uh, verse 22. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed. What is that? Do you know? Well, I figured it out. Let me share it with you. So they're talking about the law of Moses. Remember, Jesus was Jewish and the Jewish faith they follow instead of the Bible like we do they follow the Torah which is the first five books of the Bible it's just a little bit of it and that has lots of rules and laws that you had to follow back then and some uh, Jewish people still follow it today um, when their time of purification well Jesus was just born and in the, according to the Torah, when a baby is born, there's three steps you have to follow afterwards. And the first step is a time of impurity. And the second step is a time of purification. And then the third step is you go to the temple and you have a sacrifice or a sin offering. So I did a little looking around and when you have a baby boy, just like Jesus, right? The first stage, the stage of impurity, lasts for seven days. Then the stage of purification lasts for 33 days. So when Mary and Joseph, in the story here, took Jesus to the temple, it was 40 days after he was born. Do you want to hear something interesting? I don't really know why, but back then, if a baby girl was born, Instead of that first step being seven days, it was 14 days. And instead of the, um, the second step being 33 days, it was 66 days. So for a, when a daughter was born, it was 80 days had to pass before you took her to the temple. Which is kind of interesting. And then something else did you catch? Let's see. Um, their law said every firstborn male, and Jesus was Mary's first son, right, is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what it says in the law of the Lord. So following the Torah, the, the book of Moses, or the law of Moses. It's a lot to think about, isn't it? So there was a lot of rules and laws when Jesus was born that Jewish people had to follow. And we're just learning about one of them, what happened when a baby was born, especially a baby boy. And we also know that the sacrifice at the temple was usually two, it was a pair of pigeons or doves. Okay, well that was a lot of, a lot of verbiage there, a lot of words to tell us the rules that they had to follow. So, let's see. And that's all I need to tell you about that. So now we're going to jump to the next part, okay? So, um, oh, I do have one more thing to tell you. When uh, the Jewish family would go to the temple, 
they didn't quite do the sacrifice themselves. There was a priest that helped with that, okay? It's kind of an important thing to remember. So now all of a sudden, we're focusing on someone else. It says, now there was a man in Jerusalem. Now remember, Jerusalem is where Mary and Joseph went to find the temple to, for Jesus to be consecrated. So there was a man in Jerusalem. Do you remember what his name was from the Bible story earlier? Simeon who was righteous and devout. Guess what his job was? He was a high priest in that temple. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. So who would that be? God, God talked to him. It had been revealed to him, to Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, excuse me, that he would not die until, do you remember? He would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Who would that be? Jesus. Hmm. And it's also interesting with the next part, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was custom of the law required. When Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple to do that third step, which was the sacrifice, who was in the temple? Simeon. So think about that. God, or the Spirit, led Simeon to be in the temple. The same temple, the same time, same place that Mary and Joseph were coming. And we also know God told Simeon he would not die until he met Jesus. We're about ready to hear about that meeting. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Simeon took him in his arms. Who do you think him is? Jesus. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. It's pretty much saying, God, you kept your promise. Now that I've met Jesus, I'm ready to die. So Simeon knew who the baby was. And this is Simeon talking. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all the people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. So right there is really interesting. Your people, Israel, so that's the Jewish people. And Simeon's a, a priest, he's a Jewish person. But he also talks about Gentiles. That's us, that's everyone that's not Jewish, right? a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and that Jesus will be our light, and for glory to your people Israel. Remember, the Israelites, the Jewish are God's chosen people. Okay, here we go. The child's father and mother, so Joseph, the man that raised Jesus, and Mary marveled at what was said about him. That he would be the salvation, he would be the savior. It's just a baby, right? Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. Remember what happens right before Jesus dies, right? So that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Because remember, God knows what's in our heart, right? and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Well, that doesn't sound very good, does it? But ultimately, we, we know that Jesus is gonna be sacrificed and Mary's gonna suffer while that happens, right? Okay, so that's Simeon. So think about that. Simeon is a Jewish priest, right? And he was he young or old? What do you think? It doesn't tell us. 
but it does tell us that God promises he won't die until he meets Jesus. So that makes me think maybe he's a little bit older. And right away, Simeon knows who he is, right? How exciting is that? Was that the only person that talked about Jesus at the temple? Do you remember? There was someone else, right? There was also a prophetess. That's the female version, right? So that means it's a woman. Her name was Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then as a widow until she was 84. Now she never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them, so she came up to Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. At that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So I kind of think it's interesting that a man and a woman were used by God to spread the good news about Jesus. God can use everyone for amazing things. Okay, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, remember, and that was just them going to the temple with their firstborn son and sacrificing to dove and, and sharing him with God, consecrating him to God. That's all they were there to do. And they met Simeon and they met Anna and they heard so many amazing things, but it must have also been kind of confusing. But. Do you know what, do you remember where they went next? Let's find out. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Now remember, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Remember, Joseph and Mary traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem to be counted in the census, and that's where Jesus was born. But Nazareth is their home. So they're finally home. And the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So now we know not much, right? Except Jesus is healthy and he's growing. But we also know that people recognized him, right? God helped Simeon and Anna recognize Jesus. And I think that's one of those things where God uses us for amazing things and happened to put Simeon in the temple that day at the right time and Anna recognized him. Pretty amazing what God can do. But let's go ahead and have a prayer, okay? Get comfy. God, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for having patience and, and letting us learn about the plan you had for Jesus and the plan you have for us and showing how you can use people every day, everywhere, to help you, and for them to help us too. And thank you for letting us learn from everyone around us. And from all the things that we see and that we do, we can learn so many things, and please help us to make good choices this week and to look for the good in everyone. See you next week. Amen. Bye.